there seems to be a general sense of of contentment that okay you did not really uh, you did not really go overboard with the kind of socks that perhaps you could have gone out with you've kept it out for uh, uh, for your manifestos uh, while at the same time it seemed uh, it seemed apt enough to give us teasers on to those various uh, 12 15 segments that they that they spoke about uh, I have a fantastic panel here, a very diverse one, uh, in fact, and I would love to bring them in on different kinds of questions. But uh, um, uh, I think just before we started, uh, we started the official aspect of this conversation, we were talking about how each one of us used to be uh, focused on one particular aspect of the of the budget up tak, or ab hum ya to a completely different aspect pe focused hai, ya to humne pura budget bade dhyan se uh or Harik aspect you per you know we've we've kind of applied our minds uh to it. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna start with uh, Sunil first. Uh, I think you were saying something around the fact that Pele ye kuch aur hua karta tha, aap kuch aur hai. Yeah, I, uh, so good afternoon all. This is Sunil Kosla. I'm the founder of Unicorn Next, uh, go to market accelerator. Thanks, Sona, for setting this up uh, on a historic day. Uh, yes, uh, the budget was short and sweet. And uh, what we were discussing a few minutes back, uh, I think in the last two decades, the expectation from the budget has changed completely. From a myopic view in terms of uh, what will be my income tax saving or what will be uh, the benefit to my company, I think a lot of people, irrespective of the stature, they are already thinking about how how is my country moving or what are the leaps and bounds that the country is taking. So I don't know whether you guys noticed or not the body language of either uh, the people who are presenting or listening or the viewers or on news channels or talk to your friends and the biggest university of all, which is the WhatsApp university. I think one thing which has changed, which I think all of you will agree, and I'm not taking any political side, is the optimism around that Globi Aega country go leke jayega budget. I, I think that's a very, very important thing that uh, there was a time when it was always about uh, tax kam nahi hua, ye nahi mila, garibon ko kuch nahi mila, but it's not about what they intend to, which of course we'll discuss during the course, but more importantly, uh, the optimism of our 140 CR people, I think is what is very, very uh, heart heartening. And I think that is what I'm taking from this. And times are changing. The country is changing and let it be 2030 mission or 2047 mission. All of us and the generation next to us, I think will absolutely achieve this. So this is my reading about whatever I saw in the last few hours. I agree. I remember, uh, so I come from a very long uh, uh, BFSI uh, experience and then when I moved to media three years ago, uh, the, the myopia kind of sort of got a little broadened there itself. But today I have seen a change in Jab tak, you know, uh, uh, the FM came to to the part B, I was like, ha, chalo, theek hai. Ye chota sa aspect hai towards the entire thing. And when she didn't even declare anything on the on the on the taxes with Swati, I know is going to kill me for. But you know, when she didn't declare anything for the direct or the indirect taxes, tab tak mujhe tha, hai na, yaar, desh ka vision dekho na, kya dekh rahe ho, apne ke liye. Already was sawa do lakh from two point two lakhs, you know. And 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 I actually, when she said it, I realized twenty fourteen, I think it was two point two lakhs the the basic exemption, and now we've come to seven lakhs. Uh, I'm sensing when they come, uh, uh, you know, uh, when whichever government gets gets back in July, they will announce for financial year twenty four twenty five what the SOPs will be. But for me, it was very important to me at one time. And now, its importance is more or less sort of finished. Si is that the case with all of you? Swati, uh, uh, I know, we didn't have any conversation about tax. So is that okay? But, um, if, you, if you look at this government for the past five years, income tax, personal income tax has never been, you know, the wow element of any budget. True. Last year, the introduction of tax brackets change overall, which came in, was also actually appealing to a very small section of the personal income tax bracket. But, you know, if you start, even as a BCom graduate, your basic salary is anywhere between five, six lakhs or so, right? So uh, the bracket that the change of personal, in, you know, the change of income tax rates last year, the introduction of the new income tax regime really focused on was a very small section of the society. So for this 
government of the past five years, personal income tax has never been their hero. Mm. Their hero has always been speaking about, uh, you know, uh, women, uh, you know, giving more schemes for women, uplifting women, bringing more uh, rural development into picture and more towards an inclusive government. So I think that from my expect- Garib, Yuva, Mahila, or Anadaka, that those four pillars. Huh. Correct. And then they started focusing on defense, etc. Right. So the budget was never about ki personal income tax. However, earlier, you know, as you were saying, part B, huh? Ab sun- <laughs> ab is bar pata ki kitna income tax mein change no. hoga. And no. all our phones keep ringing. Like I have been, I have been a chartered accountant for 18, 19 years. For so almost 20, but you know, 20 years, whatever I've been hearing this. We used to become Google for all our friends. Yeah. But now they're like, kya baat kare yaar tere se? Kuch bhi to nahi badla hai. Utnai tax dena padega. To... Any of you uh, differ on that, on that conversation? Because interest. personal income tax, uh, uh, tax and uh, direct tax, I did not hear, uh, uh, I did not hear too much conversation happening. Are you cool with that? I think like me being a, you know, practicing CA, there were just two points that I also just heard in the entire budget, although I watched it all like for the entire one hour. One point which the government had made was, you know, uh, like if you have any indirect, uh, direct tax demand of rupees 25, up to rupees 25,000, and that demand is pertaining to say up to financial year 2009-10. So all yeah. those demands will be now waived off by the government. And trust me, uh, I think Swati would agree with me on that. Like when I have my individual clients, they all keep bothering me that, you know, Mira is sal ka refund uh, nahi mila, where is the refund gone? And I'm like, okay, you know what? There was this 10, 20 years back a demand which uh, after the government has made the systems online. So all these demands started appearing on your income tax portal. And what they would do is that if you had a refund in the coming year or in the last year when you filed your taxes, they would just go on adjusting those refunds with your previous year demands. So mm. basically the assessee or an individual taxpayer would never get the refunds. And when I asked them, Ki, bhaiya, ye demand tha aapka, us ag- uske against aapka refund adjust ho gaya, so I can't do anything. They're like, Kaun sa demand? Humne to sare taxes pay kiye the. And mm. uh, kaafi cases mein documents nahi hota tha, ya documents ke aad pata chalta tha, demand wrong hai. Because you know, uh, the transition of the income tax department from offline to online, when that was happening, I feel there are many cases where the transition hasn't happened correctly or the database hasn't updated correctly. And these small, 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 small cases would just hinder up the process so much. So when I heard that, that, you know, if you have a demand, you will it. I'm like, oh God, thank you so much. Because uh, if you deal with individual clients on a daily basis, there are many such cases where people refunds for this small issue. So that was the only thing which she eventually mentioned for the direct taxes. But uh, as a practicing CA, it has been a very big relief for me. For individual clients, for SACs, I'm not sure how much does that help. Even uh, the finance minister mentioned that that it benefits around 1 crore of people. One and uh, this was just 1 crore taxpayers. And this was just one of the slabs, another slab which she had mentioned that from financially, I think 10, 11 to 14, 15. Even yes. in those years, if you have an aggregate of 10,000 rupees, then that will be a good thing. So that's a good thing. Uske alawa to, honestly, I was not expecting any uh, tax reform. I thought that whatever will come after the election, ke baad hi aega, but uh, I was like, okay, let's see what's going on in the budget. Mein. Let me just watch it end to end. You guys are so sweet. We ask the media, our mind is always going to be clear. That you are clearing your bandwidth. Clear kar rahe ये सारे 25000 10000 के केसेस हटाओ इन लोगों को माफ करो इनसे निकलकर आ भी क्या जाएगा ये बेचारे रिटायर्ड प्रोफेशनल सैलरी वाले या या यू नो कॉलेज के बच्चे जिन्होंने कहीं कोई इंटर्नशिप वगैरह कमा रखी थी किसी जमाने में और समथिंग लाइक दैट इनको हटाओ लेट द इनकम टैक्स गाइस एक्चुअली फोकस ऑन सम लार्जर बिगर फिश तो मुझे लगता है स्वाति एंड श्रेय यू गाइस शुड बी वरिड अबाउट दोस पता मैंने कहा ना हम मीडिया वाले तो हमारा दिमाग उस जगह पे चलता है ये कहीं वो वो वापस वाला तो नहीं है Attack on black income. They want to clear their collections have gone up 10 times in the last couple of years. And um, uh, you know, the old tax, new tax uh, regime, jo, jo choice mili thi humko last year, uh, uh, like Swati rightly said, kai log already usme aate hai, to itna zada dimag nahi lagana padata unko. Um, 
कॉपरेट टैक्स रेट्स जब वो एक साल में उन्होंने जब चेंज किए थे आई थिंक फ्रॉम देयर दे हैड इंक्रीमेंटली ब्रॉट डाउन आई थिंक फ्रॉम 30 टू 22 परसेंट वो वैसे भी एक एक कंसिस्टेंट ड्रॉप उस टाइम पर ले आए थे द प्रोसेसिंग टाइम वे यू टॉकिंग अबाउट फ्रॉम नाइन्टी डेज टू टेन डेज आर दीज एक्चुअल नंबर्स डिट यू गाइज है एक्सपीरियंस इन योर प्रैक्टिस I think uh, I would definitely say about the processing time. Yes, definitely uh, because earlier, if the client if he file a return today, I think uh, 93 days is also a less number that uh, our minister spoke. Sometimes you know the returns wouldn't get processed till one year, one and a half year, and then when the system was all offline, notice आता था या नहीं आता था. No one could ever keep a track of it. But yeah, definitely in the last one year, what I've seen is that in case of individual assessees at least, or you know where the return complications are not that much. Say it is a simple salaried employee or it is a small company that is just having one source of income the returns comparatively get processed at a much faster time in few cases 10 days sure but uh, in many cases i would say one to two months and even that time frame is much lesser than what it used to take before uh, so i'm going to switch the conversation a little over here and bring in uh, bring in some of you on the on the green <coughs> side of the conversation um uh, i think all of you on on the panel uh, who are on the uh, on the on the uh, bio side or on the uh, uh, solar electricity or uh, solar electricity side uh, there is big conversation happening around the uh, uh, the electric vehicle infrastructure they mentioned about something around uh, the the solar electricity bit was was extremely surprising to come through with where households will be supported to actually generate the kind of ev infra ev charging infrastructure that we require because this is an indirect tie of that would any one of you start uh, want to start off on that conversation with me so i come from the biofuels say hi kishan from biofuels yeah so yeah i think on the bio side i think it pretty much uh, uh, very much on unexpected lines I think mm-hmm. energy security and biofuels has been a major focus area for this government over the last five years. One of the key focus areas being energy security, and I think uh, generally from a sustainability and biofuels point of view, uh, I think uh, uh, I think very much like what Mr. Sunil started the discussion with. I think things have gone beyond just looking at what is benefiting personally mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. it's going to help India in energy security. How are we moving towards biofuels? How are we moving towards waste management i think these are larger discussions that are happening today and pretty much in this budget also a lot of those example for example uh, uh, mandatory blending of cbg uh, uh, compressed biogas in in cng which is a which is a major move i think it's something that we from the biofuel and and biogas association have been asking for quite some time uh, uh, for the last 3 4 years i think it's a great move uh which will which will which will ensure that there are more than 5000 cbg units in this country in the next 2 years uh i think uh, uh uh capex outlay and and financial incentives for biomass machinery processing machinery is another thing that was announced which is another very interesting aspect that will that will help uh in the stubble burning problem that delhi faces Uh, one of the challenges there has been financing the machinery to remove the stubble and that mm-hmm. that's the reason why the stubble was never removed on time so this kind of financing mechanism i think it's great to see see them uh, uh you know uh, uh, address specific concerns which in turn will solve a much larger problem so yeah and then rooftop solar solar has always been a is been a favorite baby of the government for a long time uh we've gone to a stage where We 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 pay the lay, lowest for solar power in the world today, about less than two point four. Uh, I think that's a great achievement. And so, looking to uh, improve make in India in solar also seems to be a very interesting aspect. Yes, yeah, so that's my take on it. Some of you have been in the in the green space, have been in. I mean, either investing in it or or you know you're you're part of it already. The the wind energy conversation, the coal gasification conversation. uh opportunities for the youth in this space uh to either you know start something uh, uh or maybe you know uh, uh find employment over here or just pure uh um, you know sort of free kind of income coming into to the households in the form of just set up the solar panels and and you know consume what you have to so that's free electricity for you and uh, offload the rest to industrial units because a majority of uh, conversations around electric uh, vehicle infrastructure or electric vehicle for that matter has been that sure the vehicle per se may be green 
but uh, you know the the infrastructure behind it isn't really so because wo electricity banne ke liye jo jo ban raha hai you know that is that is not being being done in a in an energy efficient manner so do you think they are going to the source and all of this has been contributed because the startup industry is constantly seeking innovation and is constantly seeking for problems to solve uh, i would love for for my vcs on the panel to come in here apart from kishan yeah so i am amit goel i am co-founder and chief global strategist of pace 360 so we are a macro top down asset manager we are not a vc uh, we focus mostly on uh, Uh, listed asset classes so we trade and invest in equities uh, fixed income currencies uh, commodities precious metals and we are multi geography as well so we invest across uh, geographical markets of the world we invest uh, in the developed markets we invest in the emerging markets we invest uh, in india so uh, so while uh, i am not an expert on uh, uh, venture capital or on the startups but i can assure you that uh, this is one big opportunity both in the listed space uh, you know the the ecosystem the environment and the uh, considerations around the sustainability of the uh, of the planet uh, this is in my opinion a great opportunity for the long term and even your you know your sugar companies uh, which have always been uh, sort of you know considered a very insignificant part of the market but today they are also playing a role in the uh, in this sustainability revolution with the help of uh, you know uh, molasses and with the help of generation of uh, biofuels so uh, and then similarly of course we know that some of the large corporate houses whether it is the uh, ambani's or the adani's or the tatas they have huge amount of initiatives on the green energy side on the green power side and in my opinion uh, that is again a great opportunity and it has been so if you look at some stocks like uh adani power and all and tata power they have actually been some of the best performing stocks over the last few years because everybody believes in the sustainability revolution everybody believes that this is the way to go so there is no other way i mean if you need essentially the planet to survive this is what needs to be done this is the solution and if these are the solution providers obviously you end up backing them all the way from the uh, startup to the scale up to the to the listed space So what I like uh, another thing that I wanted to add up. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Anand Ji, sorry. No, no, no. I, I'll just complete uh, what what I was saying. Uh, so basically, I think what I like about this government's uh, setup and their policies is they, that they have taken a very integrated view of this entire, uh, uh, let's say, campaign. So uh, we all know that just substituting your fuel combustion engines with electric vehicles is not going to do the trick if you are generating most of your power from coal and uh, other uh, uh, let's say hydrocarbons so the fact that they have taken a very integrated view that on one hand we'll shift to electric vehicles and maybe even hydrogen vehicles and on the other hand we focus on uh, solar power we focus on all the uh, you know we focus on renewable power so i think this entire ecosystem related to the uh, power sector and then i think the entire ecosystem related to the waste management we still want more action there and there is still lot more that can be done but right from the waste collection to the processing and to the use of to the let's say uh, reduced usage of single use plastics and going into uh sustainable plastics over a period of time so i think this government has taken a very integrated view and uh, that is absolutely the way to go forward uh, but i guess we still need to do more on certain aspects related to water management uh, related to waste management so i am hoping that they they will also come up with policies on that front or very clear policies on that front over a period of time and this then will become a truly green revolution that india would actually can uh, can lead the world in yeah so oh yeah so i'm pretty much taking from where where you said so i think uh, uh if you have followed over the last one year there was this discussion that in uh, the government was you know capping or winding down on the pli scheme for evs pretty much because of the concerns that you were saying 
and very much like what Amit was saying, they focused on ensuring that power generation becomes more green with more solar, wind, mandating 7% of biofuel with coal in thermal power generation, which were part of the previous budgets. Uh, and along with that, this time the PLI is more for uh, uh, building energy storage within India and for EV infrastructure, which is the right way to go rather than spending the or the PLI only on, on EV, which is predominantly imported or with energy storage, which is imported, focus on, on building capacity of, of the same within India uh, uh, and also ensuring that you invest in, in green power generation. I'm glad that the discussion is now more on the green fuels and green energy. While five, seven years back, we would discuss on no excise duty cut on diesel or petrol and diesel prices are high and stuff. So glad no, no, I think they pretty much sector. struck off that discussion saying 94% of the leaders are happy with the GST uh, implementation. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's a done, dusted conversation over. Let's move on to the next one. Preeti, you'd like to come in over here and, and tell me, uh, uh, you know, one, of course, uh, uh, do you think this uh, this uh, is surprisingly not a populist budget uh, where they had the opportunity to to be one, uh, not a long one. And and um, uh, do you think it talks more and maybe the action is left for later? Well, a very warm uh, sort of welcome to my co-panelists here and namaskar Bharat ki janta ko. Our name is Preeti Chaudhary and we are founder of Madhya Bharat Angels. Ke. Madhya Bharat Angels is based out of Jabalpur in Madhya Pradesh predominantly serving Hindi speaking as a first or second language tier two to five towns in six states of central India. So MP, CG, UP, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, keeping Jabalpur in the center. If we draw a circle of 500 kilometer radius, then that is what we are talking about uh, being served by Madhya Bharat Angels. Vapas aapke sawal ki taraf aate huye, ye sentiment subha se hi chal raha hai ki, you know, abhi ek chota sa teaser trailer uh, type ka uh, dal diya hai jo ki bahut hi uh, chhota sa tha aur picture abhi baki hai mere dost jaise jisko kehte hain uh, isliye uh, you know i i think uh, basically there's nothing new that people have not been expecting people have been sort of saying for a long time now that you know it is going to be a threadbare minimum sort of a budget just to sort of um, carry on this momentum till uh, a government is in place when they can actually talk about and bring out more populistic policies and things. But we have a clean energy ke mein, apne se, jo hum hai, jo hai, wo share we have experienced in the world, which we have seen in the world, which we have seen in the world, clean energy is not a good thing. And in the past, the budget is not a good thing. We have seen that the stumble is not a good thing. We have seen that the stumble is not a good thing. We in में से कम से कम दो से तीन हमारे मध्य भारत एरिया में इस ग्रीन एनर्जी रेवोल्यूशन की तरफ बहुत अच्छे से जुड़े हुए हैं काफी सारे महिला स्व सहायता समूह है यहां पर जो सोलर एनर्जी में आ, काम कर रहे हैं काफी सारे युवा हैं जो यू नो सर्कुलर इकॉनमी सस्टेनेबिलिटी बायोफ्यूल्स सीएनजी की तरफ काफी बड़ी दिशा में काम कर रहे हैं इन फ्रॉम माय ओन एक्सपीरियंस आई in areas around Jabalpur, in small little pockets of Katni, Sehora, Sagar, Satna, which is the same way. So, you know, I think the indications are great. Um, the, there's only one planet, there's only one life. And the time has gone where uh, we were talking about how critical it is to save and conserve. It is now all about if you haven't done it, then you will not have anything to do with it. So, with that, I think I'll. Um, Hand the podium back to you, Sonam, and I'll uh, keep coming back here as and when. One more thing, before we go, we want to say that the budget was a lot of time, but in it, there are one or two things that we also wanted to see more. But just a little bit, Sonam, thank you. Thank you, Sonam. I would want to, I would want to um, ask um, Amit and Preeti, because you know, uh, you know, 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 uh, my whole reason for starting out bigger, leaving a, a very long, uh, decently doing career in private banking was uh, to see if in any way, 40% of the country, uh, that is the youth, uh, they can start consuming information. Or inko information consume karana kyu zaruri hai? Kyunki hamari brain drain jo itre saalo se chale aari hai, wo kam hone ke badle mein ya band hone ke badle mein has increased 
so while we are all exuberant and very happy about you know the 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 uh, contours of the budget and and its timing and the way it's it's kind of it was kind of presented and the precision of thought fact of the matter is agar aadhi country bahar chali jayegi to nations that perhaps don't even stand a chance in front of us in terms of uh, um uh, uh, you know foresight or in terms of the capability to grow uh, uh, but phir bhi ye bacche wahan bhagna chahte hain कहीं भी चले जाएंगे बस यू नो दे गो एंड स्टे इन अ पार फ्लॉग एरिया इन कैनेडा बट नॉट इन इंडिया इन लोगों के कानों तक क्या बातें पहुंच सकती हैं फ्रॉम टुडे इज बजट और पर हैप्स यू थिंक कैन बी कैन बी ब्रॉट इन योर सो एनी ऑफ यू वांट टू पिच इन द प्रीवियस कन्वर्सेशन नीड्स टू आंसर दिस वन एज़ वेल या सो आई विल ट्राई सो एडिंग ऑन टू व्हाट अमित किशन एंड प्रीति जी हैड सेड आई वी टेक अ लॉट ऑफ पिक्चर्स फ्रॉम स्टार्टअप्स इन वेरियस फोरम्स आई मीन आईआईटी फॉर द नेक्स्ट 3 डेज अगेन taking a lot of pictures from youth i think it is so heartening to see ki zyada tar pictures ab esg mein aati hain clean tech mein aati hain uh, uh, green tech mein aati hain and it is not only that uh, people from metros are pitching or uh, people from mini metros are pitching they come from any area uh, you you meet us uh, son of a farmer who's got a who's got a insta handle uh, with a million follower and he knows what i'm doing and they know that uh, it's not so वॉट इज पर्कुलेटिंग इज ऊपर से पॉलिसीज बन रही है बेनिफिट दिख रहे हैं एंड हर कोई इसमें आना चाहता है एंड इन दिच सेशन फ्यू डेज बैक काफी पिक्चर्स हुई जो सबसे ज्यादा जिसको पैसा मिला या इज्जत मिली वॉज दान आई थिंक किशन या अमित जी स्पोक अबाउट स्टबल बर्निंग में एंड दे मेड बिजनेस आउट ऑफ इट आई कैन नेम द कंपनी राइट ना बट सबसे बड़ा हिट वही निकला सो विच मीन्स दैट सब कुछ बदल रहा है नाउ कमिंग बैक टू सेकेंड पीस of course uh, i know the growth of figure and the philosophy of figure and it's very heartening that uh, there it's a young media which is coming up uh, which is bottoms up uh, rather than top down uh, uh, brain drain to ho raha hai but ek aur cheez change ho rahi i don't know if all of you have noticed bachche padhne bahar ja bhi rahe hain kuch kam kuch zyada but a lot of people are now or now already talking theek hai pad to lete hain wahan pe but let us come back and it's hmm. already happening there is uh, my own daughter may be going to a different country uh, next year for studies but one thing that they know two platforms like vigor or more that market jo is time shine kar rahi hai jo initiative shine kar rahe hain jo entrepreneur shine kar rahe hain wo sab to india mein ho raha hai which is also becoming a fact in terms of experts now pe- now the fo- western world is planning to come to india to work so i think that change you will see and it will continue to grow देखिये जो आज की तारीख में जो इंडियंस जो है वो बाहर जा रहे हैं सम ऑफ देम आर डूइंग सो वेल पर्टिकुलरली इन इन यूएस यू नो दैट practically 20% of the entire fortune 500 companies are today led by indians and by indian ceos yeah so so what i am trying to say here is that many of these guys who go to us or uk or some other countries and become immensely successful today most of them have some sort of a professional linkage with india so uh it's not like the brain drain of the 70s and 80s where people used to go they used to become citizens of other countries and that was the end of their connection with india but today that is not the case no, many of those people are today floating ventures in india they are having part of their corporate story from us they are having part of their stories in india they are they have become vcs in their own right so so what i am trying to say is that many of these people even though technically you call it you may call it brain drain but they are actually very big assets for this country they are our biggest brand ambassadors and they are contributing a lot to our uh, to our development to our economic growth and to our startup ecosystem this was one and secondly in terms of the number of people who are going overseas let's be mindful of the fact that we are 140 crore indians and now increasingly we are literate increasingly we are doing a uh, grad and post grad so 
if you look at the overall population of Indian grads and post grads, a very small percentage is going overseas or at least settling there. They may go there for education, but many of them are coming back. So what I'm trying to say here is that the numbers they are not so significant anymore because the number of IITs and IIMs have gone up. We are producing a lot many more engineers and very, very capable professionals in this country. A very small percentage of them may be going overseas and many of them have actually become great assets for this country. So I do not personally look at whatever brain drain is happening I do not necessarily look at that as something which is disastrous for this country. I think, Interesting uh, perspective. Yeah, yeah, I also add to it like uh, considering our finance uh, content creator. So I happen to go to these business schools and interact with the Gen Zs and the young students right now. So I totally agree with both of them. So the brain drain that is happening is uh, it's only in terms of education like if you talk to them about work they want to work for india in india and they want to build businesses in india and actually take it to a level where their uh, the global the global audience attracts to them so that is a thought process the only uh, lack that i see is in the education system which is why they prefer going abroad but even uh, if i ignore the students even if you talk about young entrepreneurs of maybe my age or uh, five seven years older like say in the group of 25 to 35 if you talk to them they're all in the mindset of making india grow and believing in india and that is why they stick to india and even in, personally, if I'll tell you, I have a couple of friends, you know, who went abroad and uh, earned well, good money out there. But now post marriage or even if you talk about considering marriage, they come back to India and they think of settling to India that I think the uh, the infrastructure growth or the kind of development that our country is seeing. I think that has a very big factor to play. And so of course, the positivity of it. Them, I would, thank you so much. Uh, Sonam, I have a different perspective on it. हमारा जो कंसर्न है वो एक्चुअली जो प्रोफेसर्स एंड एंड यू नो द फैकल्टी है उनको लेकर है वहां जो ड्रेन हो रहा है उससे हमको ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम है बजाय हमारे बच्चे बाहर जाके फिर वापस आए चाहे ना एंड अगेन आई एम टॉकिंग फ्रॉम माय ओन पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस आई लिव्ड इन चाइना फॉर ऑलमोस्ट अबाउट एट ईयर्स एंड आई यूज टू रन एन एक्सपर्ट ग्रुप देर सो जस्ट टू कोलेबरेट द फैक्ट दैट यहाँ पर जो भी बाकी पैनलिस्ट कह रहे हैं मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडियंस हु सेटल अब्रॉड वो वापस आना चाहते हैं बट ऑफ लेट जो हमारे यहाँ के प्रोफेसर हैं वो लंडन यूके में जाकर पढ़ाना शुरू कर रहे हैं वो यूएस में पढ़ा के जाना शुरू कर रहे हैं हमारे आई आई टीज आई एम से यू नो डबल ट्रिपल क्वड्रुपल सैलरीज देकर यूएस में उनको रिसर्च करवाया जा रहा है अब जब पढ़ाने वाला ही नहीं रहेगा तो हमारे बच्चों को कौन वो क्वालिटी एजुकेशन देगा इसका यू नो क्या हल है क्या सोल्यूशन है दैट इज अगर कंसर्न फॉर मी देन एनी अदर सॉर्ट ऑफ ब्रेन ब्रेन बैक टू यू सोनम किशन यू वॉज एग्जाम्पल So I think I kind of agree with with all of them. They all of them have great, very valid points. I was about to say a few of them also. But I think uh, predominantly summing up what other uh, they were saying is, I think 15 years back or say five ten years back when people went abroad to study. very bluntly the feeling was i don't want to come back to india i want to escape hmm. this country so that hmm. was the feeling 10 years back which is or agar aap piche reh rahe the to ya to aap bewakoof hai ya to you know matlab ya to duffer hai isliye aapko opportunity nahi milti it's not the it's not the uh, uh, you know the the lack of intelligence the lack of capability yeah Haan. it was very more of the capability yeah hmm. exactly and now i think it's i think what there's a rising in affluence i think uh, it's that rising affluence that is pushing a lot of people to go abroad predominantly again because of what uh, amit ji and preeti ji said that education needs to do a lot more uh, my wife is a professor she works abroad uh, so by itself an example as to yeah i think we've not been able to retain and respect teachers the way i think uh, many other countries have been able to do that uh, so i think that needs to change but having said that i kind of agree with everyone that uh, no longer it's about escaping the country everybody after education abroad knows the opportunity lies in india whether it is as an entrepreneur or as a job uh, the opportunity and the scale lies in india and it's the rising in affluence of people especially the urban population that is pushing more and more people to go abroad i think 10 years back nobody could think of undergrad abroad now it's so common that uh, yeah. you know uh, yeah i think uh, among the 
among the cream schools in in each city a lot of them go even for undergrad abroad uh yeah. which is again i think uh, i think is, they train is, you is, for that aspect only that you are going to go undergrad uh, so nine standard se you know conditioning shuru kar dete hain ke true, okay true. start making college applications i think that's yeah. that's the standard how the number of igcsc and ib schools dropping up from yeah. prominently for that market So uh, um, I think I'm going to direct this conversation to what uh, our honourable finance minister also said, and I think this this is a conversation which is which has kept coming up. Uh, the words have kept coming up uh, a lot and has been ringing in my ears. The new world order. I think that is something which a lot of them keep saying, and uh, and all of us know that this was devised during the the Cold War when the Soviet Union collapsed. The new world order was was to come in. Then India was not even part of the conversation at that time. We were a third world country, uh, but we've come to the point where. Where today we are having the new world order, not just a conversation, but we are actually leading, so to speak, the new world order with certain emerging economies with us, but also the fact that we are one of the top contenders for the top three uh, economies in the world. Japan and Germany are barely there, and if we continue growing at the rate that we are growing, um, nominal and real GDP both wise, we might just end up uh, landing up in the top three uh, pretty soon. by virtue of our growth and their slowdowns uh do you guys believe in this because each one of you is catalyzing uh, uh this 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 sort of uh, dream this conversation in your own ways either financing it or either complying with whatever it is the dream runs that that you know the the uh, uh the operators of the space are functioning towards primarily the youth and the startup industry uh what's your thought do you think we are actually part of the new world order or uh, i am completely completely sure that this will happen it, uh, so i think it's all about positioning it's all about a narrative Uh, and sometimes words help so uh, abhi jo latest uh, pitch hai which is viksit bharat by 2047 so kuch saal pehle 2022 5 trillion economy tha fir 2030 mission 2030 aaya now it's 2047 which is like 100 years of independence i think uh, that is where uh, smart positioning smart marketing gimmicks help because then everybody starts to speak the same language वेन वी वर इन स्कूल हम लोगों को इतना ही पता था विच इज जय जवान जय किसान नाउ दिनेशन इज चेंज सो ऑफकोर्स इट्स मैं मेरा उसका अपना खुद का डेफिनेशन है सो जय जवान पहले आई थिंक इट वॉज ओनली अबाउट द डिफेंस फोर्सेज बट नाउ यू कैन इजिली एड यूथ इन दैट राइट सो यूथ बिकम्स जवान ऑल्सो Jai Kisan. It's not only the farmers that you're talking about, but you talk about all the lower middle class or uh, tier three, tier four, and beyond. Now the latest one, which is Jai Vigyan. I think that covers uh, not only technology; it covers the startup ecosystem. It covers innovation. Again, it's the, it's the lens that you see with, right? Yeah. The latest one, which is Jai Anusandhan, which I think is research, but it it may cover medical. It may cover other things like green one, which uh, Kishan was talking about. and then there are few more which are very subtle uh, i think there is a lot of things happening around jay jay women uh, of course it's not part of the four but we can clearly see the chain and it needs to be there with almost equal percentage of male female why should it not be there i've got two daughters why should it not be there right it has to be because we know the kind of talent that we have it was only a matter of opportunity and self belief and thankfully this is changing and the change is happening right from the bottom and the next one which is one of my favorites is like jay, even jay tourism i think the country has a lot of good things you can root it uh, link it with uh, civilization plus tourism i don't care but uh, i think that piece that why everybody needs to go outside for a destination wedding or maybe a honeymoon or maybe a bigger occasion you just I, i've been part of a sales division for two decades and i've seen the entire country trust me there are at least 10000 places which all of us will not even know that they exist and but they are there so i think this all narrative will take us to not only 2030 top 3 top 5 is only a name a uh, world wo kehte na wo log jo bhi karte hain karne lo we can't change them beyond a point but let us do what we can do and again coming back to my first point that the optimism is now in everyone there are 10 members on this screen and there are there probably 1 million listeners of, of this Uh, i think it is the optimism it is the positioning which will take all of us along and baki sab numbers hain talk may i quickly add uh, something here you know so now i think um, 
वी शॉट शॉर्ट ऑफ मूव विथ कॉशन एंड हम लोग सबको साथ में लेकर चले आई थिंक दैट इज वॉट इज रिक्वायर्ड यू नो चाहे पचहत्तर साल हो स्वतंत्रता के चाहे सौ साल हो जाए पर अगर हम अपने शॉर्ट ऑफ से वेटरन्स को अपने एल जी बी टी क्यू कम्युनिटी को अपने पीपल विद डिसबिलिटीज को भी साथ में नहीं लेके चलेंगे देन वॉट आर वी रियली रनिंग टूवर्ड्स यू नो समावेशिता तभी हो सकती है जिसमें ना अकेले सिर्फ जेंडर बट और भी पिलर्स उनको भी उनका भी समावेश किया जाए और सबको साथ लेकर आगे बढ़ा जाए इतनी सारी चीजें आज हमने सुनी बजट में सब कुछ सुना बट कहीं भी एक भी जिक्र नहीं था कि हमारे वीर जवान वीर नारियों के लिए क्या कोई प्रोविजन हैं या फिर हमारे यू नो पीपल विद डिसबिलिटीज और फ्रॉम दी एल कम्युनिटी के लिए हम कुछ करने जा रहे हैं कि नहीं ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ दीज पॉलिसी डाउन टू द ग्राउंड इज वेरी मच डिजायर मतलब ठीक है एक ट्रिपल तलाक अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ी कॉन्वर्जेशन थी अपने वक्त में बट there needs to be uh, things that we do now and i think we as citizens now need to be a part of that conversation wo akele government se nahi ho payega any of you want to contribute to the new world order communication so no my uh, you know i think the last line which you said was that we just can't rely on the government to do everything yeah ultimately it's our country also right ye desh pe pehle mera hai baad mein the government ka hai so uh, what preeti mentioned was very rightly pointed out that this budget could have been or rather any budget could have been far more uh, inclusive you know we should inclusive. start thinking about uh, uh, a lot of sections of our society but i think as a country we have really moved ahead for example in a zoom session where there are 10 people we are at least talking about topics like that yeah. and 15 years back there was no mention of this i think at that point of time people used to fight ki are please talk about women please talk about women rights we want equal rights i think now somewhere we women are starting to take this for granted that hey if you don't give us seat at the table are you sure it's correct because i'm not gender asking, conversations have happened. been running for the last one and a half two yeah, decades so dheere dheere wo khatam hokar hum ab wo next logon ko include karne lage next pe aaiye chaliye let's let's include like the third gender handle, let's include northeast yeah correct so you handle a bigger problem which is the gender bias and then you once you have solved the bigger battle then you start getting into the smaller battles as a society as a government even if you or me are in the government we would also do that the same so i think preeti is very very correct that we as a society can pick up these small battles and which you very correctly mentioned and i think a lot of us have those small roles uh, uh, a uh, startup ecosystem and i think in the startup ecosystem also if you hear uh, if you go to uh, as he was saying that he heard approximately 100 2000 pitches every month i work very intrinsically in the startup ecosystem and every time every pitch session i go to i'm very amazed that now there is always one startup who wants to talk about these topics they want to top up uh, talk about this is a problem we are going to solve it this is how we solve it Uh, and that is why we mm. need the money or why we need the resources so i think some of the battles we are picking up that hey i am picking up this problem right and i am going to solve it so i think somewhere we every as a community or as the arm janta of the country also start need to picking up ki okay this is something that i can solve and let the government handle the bigger issues probably my take so kishan and amit ji i think i'm going to i'm going to ask you the same question but uh, i'm also going to direct this uh, uh, you to answer it from from two perspectives kishan you from the from the ground perspective the on ground reality uh, uh, you know the bottom up uh, like like uh, like sunil mentioned in the bottom up perspective and amaji i want you to look at it from a macro perspective uh, across the world the world shows brilliantly behind you in your <laughs> in your in your background also i want you to look at it from from that perspective telling us uh, you know are we part of the new world order one and second uh, um uh, what else do we need to do 
to get in there the budget is uh, i mean i think the budget is more or less a done conversation uh, there were a slew of announcements but not yet uh, i think they are awaiting uh, the fact that you know if and when they get reelected they'll that's when they are announced but one are we part of the new world order or leading the new world order and second if we need to actually do this what is it that we require to do right. so while uh, uh, amanji can i go first yeah yeah please please kishan so yeah uh, the new world order is a very interesting discussion uh, i although i agree with sunil ji and and the general optimism i i totally agree going from grounds up optimism is there right across india right from the farmer Uh, we work very closely with farmers, very closely with FPOs, very closely with agro processing industries. So, right from bottom up, uh, we see a very strong optimism. The optimism, I think, is 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 generally there that India is growing phenomenally and uh, has done better over the last seven to uh, eight years or ten years. Uh, it's been it's 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 there. But and I I agree with Sunil ji that we definitely uh, are going to be there, but I'm not sure if we are yet there. So, from a new order perspective, are we part of the new order yet? I don't know. For me, I think two aspects that will play a very key role uh, in in being part of the uh, new world order will be technology innovation. Very important. I think the progress that we do both in terms of technology innovation and second will be in sustainability as to how sustainable and how inclusive as a uh, as a country we be. I think these three factors will play a very key role on on how uh, uh, we become part of the new world order. Uh, in that order, I would still say first technology innovation, second sustainability, and third inclusivity. Uh, I think in that aspect, government is playing a great thing. I think uh, in terms of sus- supporting the startups in this country, both Sunil ji and Swati ji said the way kind of innovations are happening. I think it's great. Uh, India definitely will become the Uh, third biggest startup ecosystem, much faster than becoming the third largest economy of the world. Uh, I think we are we are very close to that being that, and I think I think if we are not already there, I think we're already the third biggest startup ecosystem. Uh, so we're we're almost there way before being the third economy. So uh, innovation and technology, we've got it right. Sustainability, I think, broad India is playing kind of a leadership role already there. I think there are mm. so much part of the world which is taking India as an example, especially with the kind of move that we've done towards sustainability over the last five years. It's yeah. it's it's at breakneck speed that we're moving on in sustainability. And on the inclusivity, the government is playing a very civilizational concept, which is true. Uh, kind of establishing what Swami Vivekananda said that we are a civilization that accepted invaders, not tolerated them. Uh, so. Tolerance is easier to do. Accepting is way more difficult to do. So pushing that civilizational thing uh, uh, globally also is helping. Uh, uh, but yeah, we're not there. But I think we should be there very soon if we focus on all these three. Well worded, Amit ji. Your final words. So uh, well said, uh, Kishan. So I completely agree with uh, whatever Kishan has said. What I would want to add here is that. Uh, uh, we are sort of macro top down investors, and that's how we look at the world. and i can uh, uh, i can uh, definitely tell you today that whether it is the world of business uh, whether it is economics or it is uh, politics and geopolitics india is now uh, india is a power center india is affecting the world and india is sort of acting as a catalyst on so many different fronts and apart from india i would want to say that uh, it should be india plus indians because there are you know that almost uh, uh, 1 and 1/2 to 2% 1 and 1/2% of our population is actually overseas and uh, they may have citizenship of uh, other countries but they are also definitely part of the indian diaspora and they are in many ways our biggest brand ambassadors i can safely tell you that between india and indians we are now not just part of the world order rather increasingly we are going to we are a very very significant player who is affecting and who is impacting the conversations across topics across geographies and uh, uh, if you look at the world of business for example if you look at it if you look at pharma uh, uh, if you look at uh, so many different products which uh, where india is a major importer or exporter 
so the world of business uh, today uh, has india as a very very significant voice on the table and uh, uh, we have lot of interactions with businessmen from us uk western europe and other parts of the world and i can seriously tell you that today there is no ceo there is practically no business in the world which does not want to have an india strategy many of them already have an india strategy and the others want to have an india strategy so we are in some ways in a position where china was about let's say 20 years back when every business in the world wanted to have a china strategy and today i can safely say that we are gradually inching towards that landmark so uh, definitely we've done extremely well as a country and as a society and of course this is still the beginning and we still have long ways to go fantastic i think uh, 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 while certain firsts were definitely made certain new terms were definitely coined uh, during the course of today's budget uh, um, some of them were reiterated like we just discussed the new world order the gdp being a new term from gross domestic product to governance development and progress if i'm not if i'm not wrong that was that was what it was uh, built out to be um i i hope that uh, you know they get a chance to continue what they've started out with, with the interim again in july but then uh, we also hope that india chooses right when the elections uh, come through whichever government they choose in whichever uh, format that they choose uh, we are a democracy and all of us who are representing uh, you know different segments of the society here uh, still our segments india as a whole will will i'm sure decide and and we will know in a couple of months as to who comes back to present the july but uh, to my mind i think this has been a fantastic discussion a very focused one kudos to uh, to a to a strongly focused budget and let's look forward to an election season uh, hopefully india will choose right and we'll have a discussion again in july thank you so much for your time everyone mm-hmm.